All right, welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today? Nathan, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm still trying to recover from last week's episode, man. That that interview with Michael was it was a topic that rarely gets talked about by copywriters. A lot of copywriters just kind of uh, glaze over when you start talking about SEO, but man, he brought so much kind of like mind boggling information to the episode that I think that if the, if the listeners haven't listened to the last episode, if this is your first episode of the copywriters podcast, as soon as you're done with this one, subscribe, go back and listen to that episode. So, Cause it was so good. Yeah. yeah. SEO copywriting. Um, I got to tell you, I think this may be, I, I, I can't remember all 180 some episodes. This may be the first time we had state of the art information. I really felt that. I mean, he was, you know, Michael was literally talking about, you know, what Google was saying about SEO um, this year, you know, at a conference as part of a trend of development and so forth. So, yeah. Wow. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So how are we going to follow that up this week? Well, um, this way, I see a lot of questions from beginning copywriters, working pros, business owners, and they all boil down to this. What can I do to get good at copywriting and stay good? And of course, the first answer that comes to mind for me is hire me as your copywriting mentor. But that's not always practical for a number of reasons. I can only work with a few people at any given time. A lot of people, to be blunt, are too early in their skills from mentoring for me. Some people don't want to make the investment and some people don't have the time for it. And some people don't like to be coached one-on-one. Cool. All these things make sense to me, but I want no copywriter left behind, no business owner either. And most of all, no, I'm not running for president, but I am doing a podcast and so I put together a carefully selected list. Now, we can kick back and forth, Nathan, of, of hacks and reps, reps like reps in a gym to help you get good and stay good. And for these groups activities, you can do by yourself. The fifth one does involve other people. And I'll suggest a variety of training and coaching op- options I can personally recommend. Okay, and as we get started, there's one thing I'd like to recommend right now. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast. And most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims, and if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries, like health, finance, and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So as we get started in this, one thing I wanted to say is if you look at copywriting just like a part of your day or a necessary evil or something you enjoy doing, I'm not sure that's the the best way to look at it alone. I, I think it's better to to look at it um, maybe like a video gamer or maybe like, you know, a bodybuilder in that there are levels and, and, and there's progression and it's a skill and it also involves physical stamina and mental stamina and mindset. And so that's why I put these things together and I didn't just pull them out of my mm, hat. I, um, uh, th- these are things I've done or other people have done and have worked and have helped. Maybe you'll know some things too that I don't. In fact, I know you know a lot of things I don't. Maybe you want to share some things in this area. So uh, let's start with the first one. Really simple. Read copy every day. I mean, especially copy in your field and copy out of your field, but most important copy that works, even more important copy that reaches you that made you want to buy something or even made you buy something, read it, even better, read it out loud. Um, 
The reason for this is you're probably going to be reading anyway. You're going to be reading stuff on Facebook, on Twitter, maybe on a news site, maybe on an adult site. And so you don't want to confuse what you see on CNN.com or Fox News with copywriting. That's news or propaganda, if you will. That's different. You, you know, you, you want to familiarize yourself because it's not at our baseline of, of knowledge of pictures in our mind of reading for the most, of, most part, for most of us. Copy is um, something we've learned and we need, need to refresh that. Uh, I, I will mention that I've heard Gary Bensavenga read copy every day. Um, I will say I read copy out loud when I'm critiquing it. Sometimes I will read it out loud as I'm talking to the writer. You get more of a physical and emotional and an auditory sense of uh, how it's going to affect other people when you do. Uh, any thoughts on that, Nathan? Uh, I would say take off your ad blockers. A lot of people nowadays, even copywriters, they put ad blockers on their web browsers. They put ad blockers on their phone. They pay for the subscription service so they don't have to see ads. And for me, it's like, man, how do you know what's working? Like, I love ads. I'll sit through ads just so I can see what's working. And when I take on a new client, I'll go to YouTube and I'll start searching their competitors just so the algorithm starts sending me their competitors ads just so I can see, okay, what are they doing? What are, what are their, how are they advertising? What points are they hitting? What pain points are they talking about? What unique selling propositions are working for them? Um, we live in a time where you can, where you can technologically help yourself be ad blind but as a copywriter i think that you you say it read copy every day uh make sure that you're not denying yourself the opportunity to see which ads are working right now a lot of times we talk about go back and read the old ads go back uh check check swipes.com or check some of the old but knowing what's working right now can also be a great advantage so uh, i i would just say um, there's a wealth of advertising out there, but a lot of times we use technology to blind ourselves to it. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, of course, there's always that shoemaker's children issue that, you know, shoemaker's children are the ones that have no shoes. But if, if, you're, if you want to be a copywriter, you can't hide from copy except when you're writing, I think. So I agree with you. Now, Let's talk about storytelling. Uh, there's uh, so much to say about it. And, you know, you could read every book that Joseph Campbell wrote and, and watch his PBS interviews with Bill Moyers. And you could go to all of the Hollywood screenwriting seminars like I did about 10 or 15 years ago. But you might not have time for that. <laughs> And uh, it, you might not want to do that. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something much easier um, that's quick and legal and very effective. So I had a client, who's very good, who's getting great results, but he was just running up against a mental wall when it came to writing stories. And it turned out that he was a big fan of Jack Reacher. And if you don't know Jack Reacher, there's about 20, 25 books. Um, the author, Lee Child, writes them once a year. Um, and it's incredible writing. I came up with a little exercise for him to get five of his favorite Jack Reacher books and to write out the first two or three pages of each book. Because, you know, the beginning of a novel is the same thing as uh, your headline. I mean, it's got to be the best part. And, and just to write it out um, more than once. You know, and so he did that for a few weeks and it broke the block. It was like it opened the floodgates. All of a sudden he was writing stories and they're great stories. Now, I like Jack Reacher. In fact, um, this client told me that there's a Lee Child approved Jack Reacher coffee and I bought it. You know, it's, um, it's from the Baltimore Coffee and Tea Company. But 
he's not my favorite. I think my favorite, if, if I were to do that today, I would probably do it with the Orphan X books by Greg Hurwitz. I love his writing even more than, than Lee Childs. Um, but you could, you could do it with anything. Now, I think it's important to do this with fiction. There are a few nonfiction writers that are extraordinary these days. Um, I won't even mention who they are. I would just say stick to fiction. And one thing I'd also like to say is be really careful when you start hand copying sales letters. Uh, one of the things you can do is unknowingly internalize someone else's copy word for word. And if it ends up in your copy, you could be staring down the double barrels of a copyright infringement suit. Um, not really likely to happen, but it could. So just be careful about that. But unless you're writing novels yourself, I don't think you're running into any kind of danger like that with the, um, um, we'll call it the Jack Reacher strategy. I, I think it's interesting that you brought this up. I interviewed Ray Edwards a while ago. And one of the questions I love to ask copywriters is, what's your favorite book or what book are you reading right now that you're really getting a lot out of as far as copywriting goes. And his answer was anything by Stephen King. Uh -huh. like, Stephen King doesn't write sales copy. And he said, no, but he writes amazing fiction. And every time I read a Stephen King novel, I have a bunch of ideas for how to make my copy more compelling. So uh, as business owners, as, as copywriters, we're, we focus a lot on the copywriting books, the marketing books, but Learning from the world of fiction is great advice. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so besides um, hand copying books, if, if you're gonna write copy, you need to read some things. I mean, you do. Uh, you, you don't need to like read, read three or four hours a day, but there's some, there's some things you need to read to get your sites right and learn techniques. There's a real mindset shift that needs to occur for you to be a good copywriter. And so I'm going to suggest three books you can read just once. And of course you should read them more than once, but even if you just read them once, I think that will, uh, this is especially for beginners, but it'll really help anybody who's looking for shortcuts that are still going to get you high quality. One is Tested Advertising Methods by John Caples. The second one is How to Write the Perfect Sales Page by Nathan Fraser. And the third one is Breakthrough Copywriting by Yours Truly. Um, each, each one of those books is, is very valuable, very simple to understand and easy to apply. Hmm? So, yeah. <laughs> I did not expect that you were going to plug my book and I'm incredibly honored and feel uh, I'm blushing over here. Well, yeah, it, it wasn't just because you're my producer. It's, it's because it's a really good book and it, it's, it's going to help people who know nothing about copywriting as well as people who do. Now there's a second set of books that you should read multiple times. Um, and the reason for that in, in two of the three cases is not because you won't understand everything, because you probably will. The reason for that is this is stuff that you want to take deeper than your knowledge. You want to sort of get it into your bones, into your neurology. The first one is scientific advertising by Claude Hopkins. Uh, David Ogilvy says you should read this at least seven times before you have anything to do with advertising. And there are a lot of um, other people who've said the same thing. Uh, and I'm saying the same thing. It, I mean, it wouldn't hurt if you read this book once a year um, because it talks about principles that are counterintuitive for anyone who's been brought up in this country unless you actually grew up in a family, like remember we had Matt Rizvi on, uh, his father was a copywriter. If you you know, if you grew up in a family where they were entrepreneurial and marketing, you might, might have more of this mindset, but um, no, most people don't. A second book 
that you should read repeatedly is a technique for producing ideas. I believe that Jay Abraham said he read it 50 times. Um, I'm not nearly as extreme as Jay. I only read it five times. Um, but it's, it's worth it. It's by James Webb Young. It's a very short book. It, it seems ridiculously simple. So don't look at this book like knowledge. Look at it as an actual process, a technique that you're actually going to use. Once you start to use it, whole new worlds will open for you. And it's, it's not that hard to do. It's just different from what most people do, what you learn to do in school. If, if you're a very creative person and you've worked on creative projects, especially at a large scale, um, it may be somewhat familiar. So uh, the third book you should read multiple times is called Breakthrough Advertising. And I wouldn't even recommend you read this until you've done some copy, until you've actually been bounced around uh, the marketing experience a little bit. It might make theoretical sense to you, but it'll make, I mean, in our last um, call, um, Michael Fortin was just rattling off one of the chapters, yeah. like, uh, you know, it was uh, the alphabet or something, because he's really been around the block. So Sorry. Breakthrough Advertising by Gene Schwartz. And again, it makes more sense when you have a little more experience. What do you think? I think all three of these books are works where the more you understand, the more you can get out of them. So you read through it once and a lot of the stuff is just going to go over your head, but you get a little bit of a foundation. And then when you read through them again, especially breakthrough advertising and scientific advertising, they're books where you read through it the second time and you pick up so much stuff that you weren't able to pick up before you got through it the first time. And then you go through it the third time and then all these other things. And you're like, how come I didn't get this the first two times or the first three times I read it? So to really get what these books have, I think it's almost required that you read through them at least three or four times. Yeah, I, I think that's true. And it occurs to me the reason you didn't get it the first time is Claude Hopkins did not write scientific advertising as soon as he got a job at an ad agency. Gene Schwartz did not write breakthrough advertising as soon as he wrote the letter that founded Boardroom. They had years and years of experience and it was reflection on that experience and what they learned from the experience and then they condensed it down and then they organized it into a system. So it, it's like you're going to have more rapport with their material if you've had some of those experiences too. And I, I think that might be why. The third thing or the fifth thing, We've already gone through four of them, which are, you know, read copy every day, handwrite uh, the openings of a few books of a favorite fiction author, um, books you could read once, books you could read multiple times. C copywriting is a solo thing, but it's not totally isolated. After all, you are talking to one other person. So there, are, you're not the only person there. So it's, it's a, Good idea to take a course or join a group, have people to talk to. Don't expect the group to do your learning for you or figure stuff out for you. I think you got to take initiative with those other things um, for that. But so John Carlton has the simple writing system. That's, that's a really good course. It's a couple thousand bucks. That's not a bad price for what you get because there's individual attention in a group environment with a coach and there's a structured learning system. That's one option. Another one, my friend, Kevin Rogers has copy chief. He's created a whole community in there. There's, um, you know, different levels of, of what you can get. Um, I don't know a lot about it, but I know some really good things have happened to some people who've been in there. And the third thing I can recommend is a copywriter club, Rob Marsh and Kira Hug. I, I don't know the extent of what they have, but they have a lot of different programs and they have a, a free Facebook group with maybe 10,000 members, the Copywriter Club. Um, 
maybe you have other um, groups you can suggest or any thoughts about any of these. I don't know. I feel like we missed a giant opportunity here on a list of things of what you can do to get good at copywriting and stay good at copywriting. The most obvious one to me is subscribe to the copywriters podcast. Well, duh, of course. <laughs> that, one, that one just goes without saying. Um, David, this is a fantastic list. And I think that the one thing that I would, that I would add to this is sharpening the axe. It's important. Once we got this skill down, it's important to make sure that we keep our axe sharp rather than just let it go rusty and expect that, oh, I figured out how to copyright. Now every sales, I had that one grand slam. Now everything I write is going to get sales. It's not that way. It's, it's something that uh, we do have to continue going to the, going to the gym and, and, and doing the reps in order to make sure that our mental muscles stay strong. You know, let me give you a very embarrassing um, share about this. C copywriting is, is a lot like bodybuilding. And I used to lift and I used to do uh, uh, interval training and stuff like that. And I haven't recently. And a woman, I'll, I'll share her the embarrassment of saying her name, but a woman on, the inter on Facebook recently asked me, do you wear a bra? <laughs> oh, no. No, it, it, I'm taking it totally out of context. It was about a joke about a graph of what people stopped doing, you know, when the pandemic hit and the first thing was bra. You know, no one wears a bra. And, and so because I posted it, she figured I drew it, which I didn't. Uh, so it was all in fun. But seriously, that's like, that's an analogy of what happens, you know? And uh, I'm, I'm not in the shape I used to be, I'll tell you that. I never was Mr. Universe either. But So you got to stay in shape um, physically too. I, I, so, see those, I see my barbells in the background calling me, David, David. So uh, continue listening to the Copywriters Podcast or you run the risk of getting the copywriter's equivalent of sagging man boobs. Oh! That's very incentivizing. Yes. Keep listening or else. Dun, da, da, dun. Awesome. David, another fantastic episode. And if listeners out there want to check out more, copywriterspodcast.com is where we've got all the archived episodes. Anything else before we're out of here? No, just, you know, one thing I was thinking about that I, you might have mentioned it. If In addition to this list, people should listen to the Copywriters Podcast. Absolutely. All right, man. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Catch you later.